Today we're going to be talking about how to use disks and washers to find volume. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to find the region bounded by y equals square root of x minus 1, y equals 0, and x equals 5. We've been told to rotate that region around the x-axis and then to find the volume of that rotated region. Whenever I have a disk and washer problem, I always like to look at this chart that I have. It's on my website, on my disk and washer page. But the first thing that you want to do with these problems, or even with cylindrical shells problems, is to consider the axis of rotation. So in our case, we're rotating around the x-axis, which puts us in the first column here. If we were rotating around the y-axis, we'd be in the second column. Keep in mind also that if you're told to rotate around the line, for example, y equals 1, that would put you in the first column. So in other words, if you have a horizontal axis of rotation, the x-axis is a horizontal line, any line y equals some constant is a horizontal line. If you're told to rotate about a horizontal axis, then you're in the first column. If you're rotating about a vertical axis, whether it's the y-axis or some line x equals a constant, then you're in the second column. So in this particular problem, we're in the first column. And what that means is that we need our functions in the form y equals f of x. So we need them defined for y in terms of x. And luckily in our case, we already have that. We have y equals and then something in terms of x. If you've got a couple lines here, y equals 0 is a line, x equals 5 is a line, you don't have to worry about those all being in terms of y. Only if it's more complicated than a line do you need it in terms of y equals f of x. Now when it comes to the radius of our region, whether we have a disk or a washer, after we rotate the bounded region, if we have a disk, our radius is going to be f of x. In other words, our radius is going to be the square root of x minus 1. If we have a washer, we're going to need to subtract the inner radius from the outer radius. The easiest way to determine if we have a disk or a washer is to sketch our region and our region of rotation, so we'll do that in a second. Keep in mind that our cylinder is going to look roughly vertical like this. If we have a disc or a washer, there's a difference here. Again, if we're in the second column, our disc and our washer will look roughly horizontal like this. Now in the first column, we know that our integral is going to be v for volume is equal to the integral from a to b of ax dx, keeping in mind that this area here, a of x, is pi r squared. So we've gone ahead and written that formula here. That's how we know that that's what we're working with. If we were in the second column, we'd have a completely different integral in terms of y with limits of integration with respect to y. So now that we have a rough idea of what we're doing, let's go ahead and sketch our region because that always makes it easiest for us to visualize what we've got going on here. So if I draw my xy coordinate plane here, x and y, and I call this 1 here, this y equals square root of x minus 1 is going to give me the parabola that opens sideways, so that's going to look roughly like this. So we've been told that the region is bounded by this curve here, y equals square root of x minus 1, by y equals 0, which is just the x-axis, and by x equals 5. So if we call this 5 here, we're also bounded by this line x equals 5. So essentially here we're looking at this region right here, the region bounded by these three curves we've been given. That region is the one that we want to rotate about the x-axis and when we rotate about the x-axis we want to find volume. It's not very difficult to see that if we rotate about the x-axis, so that means we're going in this direction like this, we're rotating around, that we'll get here this symmetry on the other side here, so the full parabola, and then we've got basically this becomes the, the 3D sketch of it would look roughly like this. We'd have this parabolic figure here. So now that we have a rough picture, what we need to realize is that we're clearly dealing with a disc. We're only dealing with a washer if we have some kind of hollow opening in the middle, but this figure is solid, which means that we've got a disc, and you always want to draw your disc or your washer perpendicular to your axis of rotation. So because we're rotating around the x-axis here, we want to draw a perpendicular approximating disc or washer, disc in this case. Um, if we were rotating around the y-axis, our disc would be the other way, and keep in mind the cylinder, what it looks like here. So our approximating disc is 
looking roughly like this. And now what we want to do is go ahead and label the different parts of this disk. So remember that with disk and washer method, we're taking an infinite number of these approximating disks and stacking them up side by side to approximate the volume of this figure here. So the width of this disk here would be delta x, and we won't necessarily use that piece of information here, but it's important to realize that the width is delta x. We want to know the radius. We're certainly going to need that for our formula. So the radius of this approximating disk right here, well, that's defined by this curve here, the square root of x minus 1, and the line y equals 0. Essentially for the radius, we have square root of x minus 1 minus 0, because the radius, this distance right here, the length of that would be whatever the value is of this function minus whatever the value is of the line y equals 0, which is always 0. If we have the value of this and we have 0 and we subtract 0 from this value, that gives us this distance here from the x-axis to that point. So that, of course, is our radius. So the radius is just square root of x minus 1, which makes sense because our table tells us that our radius, if we have a disk, which we do, is just f of x, and we know that f of x is from our original function y equals f of x, so we have square root of x minus 1. So now that we have our radius, we can plug that in here because our formula for volume is the integral of a of x, and a of x is just pi r squared. So volume will be the integral of pi times this radius squared. We need our limits of integration, and our limits of integration are going to be from 1 here to 5 here, because we were told that the region is bounded by the line x equals 5. So the leftmost value for which our solid here is defined is 1. The rightmost value for which it's defined is 5. So our limits of integration are 1 and 5. And then we have pi times our radius, square root of x minus 1, squared dx. And now we just need to solve this integral. So we'll get volume equals, we'll pull pi out in front because it's a constant coefficient square root of x minus 1 squared takes away the square root sign and we just get x minus 1 dx. Now we'll take the integral and we'll get pi times 1 half x squared minus x and we'll evaluate that on the interval 1 to 5. So we'll get volume equals pi times when we plug in 5, 5 squared gives us 25 so we'll get 25 halves minus 5 minus whatever we get when we plug in our lower limit of integration. So minus 1 half minus 1. And now it's just a matter of arithmetic. We'll find a least common denominator of 2. So we'll get pi times 25 halves minus 10 halves minus 1 half plus 2 over 2. So 2 over 2. And we get 25 minus 10 is 15, minus 1 is 14, plus 2 is 16, so pi times 16 halves, which is 8, of course, so volume is equal to 8 pi. And that's it, that's our final answer. 8 pi is the volume of this solid, which is just the region bounded by these three curves rotated about the x-axis. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.